Hello, this is Julia Whitup with Talk Story TV, and we have with us this morning jo Joshua Sapiro, who's a crystal cult, skull explorer yes. and a Bitcoin advisor. And tell us what a crystal skull ad explorer is. Well, first, people need to understand what's a crystal skull, of course. Yeah. Well, a lot of people found out because they went to the last Indiana Jones film, which was called Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And basically, what they are is um, in the 1800s, they started finding these um, skulls that were made out of quartz crystal connected to the indigenous people. And great mystery. Why would somebody go to all this effort to make a skull in a human shape out of quartz crystal? Mm -hmm. so, um, and then in the beginning of the 20th century, there were a bunch of crystal skulls that came out. Some people call ancient skulls, meaning they could be quite old, like um, over 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 100,000 years old, or even older. Wow. There's really no way, we don't have a scientific way to measure it but we do have legends from the indigenous people and we also have people who are sensitives because every object has a vibrational frequency around it. So like this is one of my gifts, one of my spiritual gifts is I'm, um, I can feel different frequencies of energies. Like when I do a private session with the crystal skulls with my wife Katrina and the person sitting in front of me, I feel what it's like to be them and that triggers like information that comes, I hear, or I feel it. Or whatever. Well, you can't see where I'm sitting right now, but in that direction is a table with like about 20 crystal skulls on it. And as I scan them from each one, each one has a unique energy signature and uh -huh. a living consciousness that's attached to it. A crystal skull is now defined as any uh, gemstone, which is put into the shape, not just of a human skull, it could be an extraterrestrial skull, an animal skull, stylized skull, and um, there are different types. There's like these ancient ones I'm talking about, they come from very advanced civilizations in the past, and they have what are called old skulls, which seem to be related to like maybe the Mayans or the Aztecs, which would be a couple hundred years old to maybe a thousand years old. And then we have the modern ones, which modern carvers using diamond tip tools, because these stones are very hard. They're able to fashion them, you know, in whatever shape they desire. But until recently, there wasn't a lot of interest in this. But then I would say in the 70s, they started having special TV shows. And the Mitchell Hedges skull is the most famous one, named after an explorer named F.A. Mitchell Hedges, who's kind of like an Indiana Jones character in the 1910s and 20s and 30s. He led an expedition to British Honduras, which is now Belize, and in 1924, his adopted daughter, while climbing a pyramid that had great damage in uh, that country from the Mayans, she spotted something reflecting sunlight in the pyramid, and the local Mayan natives lifted the heavy stone and out popped this beautiful, almost exact copy of a human bone skull. And that's the one, that's the one that's the most well known. So it's kind of like when that one came out, all of a sudden people are going, what's this? Where did this come from? And all kinds of theories and ideas about it. But for me, I would just say crystal skulls are a tool coming from ancient cultures. And also, I'm going to put it out there, although I can't prove this, extraterrestrial cultures also, I think, gifted them to some of these, you know, indigenous people as well. Like I know the Mayans talk about the grandfathers of the Pleiades and the Mayans are very connected with crystal skulls. Mm -hmm. okay. That some of them may be gifts from the gods or these Pleiadians. I've seen when I've watched people who have been around the crystal skulls because of the energy and the consciousness that seems to be connected to them. It's a catalyst for awakening humanity to who we really are, which is, you know, immortal souls. We're part of creator. And this is what I think the crystal skulls are about. Because if you talk to my wife, Katrina, or I, ultimately, their highest purpose is to help humanity to create peace on this planet, which we can only do, I think, if we understand our spiritual aspect. I'd be nice if we had peace on this planet. Indeed.
So I've seen a lot of healing. This is one of the common phenomenons around the skull, a lot of healing that goes on around people. The presence, especially of the very old skulls, a very profound experience or an awakening, their gifts come out, or a lot of times what can happen around the skulls is people might have an emotional problem or a, or a blockage inside of themselves, an energetic blockage, emotional blockage, uh, some mental condition they're in, and there's been profound healing where all of a sudden it's like it's lifted or the energy is rebalanced. I think if you talk to ind indigenous people who are knowledgeable about crystal skulls and legends and are willing to talk about them, mm -hmm. these are sacred tools. And they watch when the Europeans came over in the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, they stole everything from these people. Indigenous people learn we have to protect our sacred artifacts of okay. which the skulls are considered. So it's pretty- they stole some of those too. Yes, a uh, matter of fact, I remember when I was visiting my friend Yoki Van Deaton, who lived in Miami at that time, and I think she had like five or six crystal skulls that um, she acquired. She showed me a magazine article where off the coast of Florida, they found a Spanish galleon, and in the hold were two crystal skulls. Oh. They probably stole it from the Mayans or the Aztec, and it, you know, sank on its journey back to Europe. That's kind of proof like, you know, they're doing that. And, and that's also, we hear rumors from time to time of like families in Europe from generation to generation have these skulls. So it confirms the idea. Pass them down. Yeah. But what, how did you discover that they are healing or they can help healing? Well, personally, it, they do it all the time for my wife and I, but also in the sessions when people are holding our different skulls. It's like the transformation, they go through the energy that they receive. Uh, you know, I've just watched it. I've been involved in this for over 30 years. Uh huh. I've talked to many people as well as been in the presence where they have interaction with the crystal skull and they start crying. Or I'll tell you an interesting story that happened that will probably best illustrate this. I was in Poland with the crystal skulls. It was a, I don't know what you call them, a magnetic healer, you know, using his, his hands to heal the energy that comes through. And he sponsored us. A young boy that came to have a session with us. And this boy, problem, there was something wrong with his eyes where what had to happen is they had to use chemicals to try to help him. And every time they used the chemicals, he would have to stay in bed for days to recover. So he came to us first to have the session with the skull. And after that, he went for that treatment with the chemicals. And the same day, he was out playing with his friends. So these are the kind of things that happen with people from an energetic point of view. It's like the skull. LinkedIn, they know the, the challenges or weaknesses that a person has, and they send an energy. The other thing I could share with you is we've used what's called a meridian stress test system, which is an electronic device that has an electrode that measures on the meridians on your hands and feet, which are connected to systems in your body. They have it all mapped out. Uh -huh. you know, in the United States, it's not allowed to prescribe but it can be used for an analysis. But in Europe, they use it to prescribe homeopathic remedies or, or herbs. Or, the machine tells them what the person needs to have balance. That machine with crystal skulls. And what happened is first we would measure the person with nothing. In other words, they just come in, sit down, okay, the machine says this person has a problem in their liver or their kidneys or whatever. We would ask them to hold a crystal skull and measure them. And those areas where they had problems, all of a sudden, the energy was balancing itself. This was wow. a way that we could actually see. Of course, it was coming through the person. The person's response to the energy of the skull. But it's to indicate the skull has some kind of an energy that works on the human energy, the human aura, and helps to balance. Mm -hmm. Wow. One way I could show that, but I mean, there's 
many stories, people had serious illness, they would go to see like the Mitchell Hedges skull and then go to the doctor and the doctor would say, well, what happened here? How did, where, where did it go? How could you have healed that? Oh, I just sat with a crystal skull. I can't believe that because of course, scientifically, you know, that a stone in the shape of a skull is going to totally cure and heal somebody is unbelievable. Yeah, that is. <laughs> so, you know, I could go on and on with stories, but that those would kind of like illustrate, you know, what happens. I think it's for healing, but a healing actually is helping a person to get in alignment with their spiritual self. And so help with our gifts and our, you know, our creativity. Right. Wow. Okay. And you've been doing this for 30 years. Yeah, like 35 years now. 35 years. Wow. Yeah, so you I probably saw, have a ton of stories like that. Yeah, I do. I started in 1983. I saw an amethyst crystal skull in San Jose, California, and it changed me. Um, and basically, I was working just with the picture of it before I actually saw it. And the message that I received, I call it day one of being a crystal skull explorer. Mm -hmm. We are returning to help humanity create to create world peace. Wow. Okay. And then this girl said to me, so Joshua, now that you know, what are you going to do about that? <laughs> I've for 30 years trying to educate people and, you know, and plus the other key is since we have crystal skulls, our two we have that I believe are quite old. We give people an opportunity to experience the energy connected with them. Because, you know, if somebody could say, ah, Joshua, I listened to your stories and it's a bunch of bunk and bull and, you know, you're just making it up to sell books and to become, you know, popular or whatever. But then their own experience with this girl and then they say, you know, you're right, there's something going on with this and I could feel it and it was changing me and I know, I know what you're talking about is real. So... That's wow. Maybe but, you could hop on a train and come to Colorado and bring a crystal skull with you. Yeah, no problem. We're not that far. We're in Washington. Oh, okay. <laughs> but there's a lot of people now that have crystal skulls. It's not just us. Yeah, but you have the experience working with them that I would like to see. Yeah. Well, it's, it's always, every time we travel, there's always something that happens which is remarkable, you know, unpredictable and remarkable. Either a response somebody has, or, you know, another thing that happens to people with crystal spells is they link into soul memories or inner knowledge and wisdom that they have, or they're a channel for that starts coming through. So it's really, it's unpredictable what can happen around them. There's always something though. Wow. Okay. And uh, where where all where are your skulls from? Well, most of the skulls we have were gifted. Okay. From different places. The first one I have, actually, I'll show you this okay. one. Okay. So this is a a ten pound smoky quartz crystal skull that was made in Brazil. I know the carver who made it. Okay. Please. What happened is he received a piece of quartz with the state of, uh, um, I can't remember uh, the name of the state. It's a funny name. But where he lives, there's a lot of crystal there. It's in the northern part of Brazil. So okay. what he told me is this one is 10 pounds. So it means they had to have a block between 30 to 40 pounds to make this because they have to chip it all off and everything. That's a huge, that's huge. Right. So the carver and, and where it came from is from Brazil. Okay. So skulls that are carved in Brazil and in China. And then we have special carvers all over the world, like um, and in Germany. Uh, and there's a city in Germany where they have carvers. But anyway, this is an example. And this skull told me its name is Portal de Luz, which is Portuguese, which means portal of light. And when I first received him, he was a very dark shade of gray. And there's been times where he almost becomes totally clear. Depends who he's working with. This was one of the skulls we used in our energetic tests. Especially we went to a person who was in North Carolina, had 
you know, this kind of electrostatic where it has all these um, electric lights that are flashing and everything. We put him in one of those and, and I thought he's going to get damaged with all that static electricity. He loved it. He said, that's great. Give me more. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> kind of like a living being. And um, so he's the first one that came, but all many of the other ones we have are like Brazilian carvings or some Chinese. And then we have two that definitely we know are old. One that came out of uh, China and well, actually, um, both of the skulls we have that are old, I think they came out of China or Tibet. They're finding skulls all over the world, and I think what it is is that the crystal skulls have played a major role in our world. They've um, really helped humanity. Uh, some people think they're like the ancient computers. They have not only energy, but knowledge and information encoded inside of them, too. So I keep seeing a vision that perhaps one day we'll develop a device. Maybe I see this because they had it in the past. We're connected to a crystal skull and a person will come out on the screen and say, I've been waiting for you to develop the technology so I could talk to you and give you all the knowledge and information that we encoded inside of the skull for you. Wow, so we're just waiting for somebody to come up with that technology? Yeah. It's kind of like if I went back 100 years with the DVD, nobody could read that DVD. Right. They're saying there's motion pictures on here, there's photographs, there's libraries. They'll go, what are you, insane? One little tiny disc could store all that? Well, now we understand it, of course, because we have, you know, computers that can read the disc and everything and, and players. So I see the crystal skulls in the same way that one day we'll finally be able to learn how to directly communicate because I feel like they have a lot of information to help humanity too. So, and you're accessing some of that though. Oh yes, most definitely. Uh, sometimes when I'm um, writing my books, like we have a novel that'll be coming out pretty soon, uh -huh. my crystal skull next to me, it's all of a sudden my gifts are enhanced and it's like, God, I can write so well right now. What's <laughs> And the skull is going, yes. And he call, that one calls me dead and says, yeah, dad, I want to be a part of this. Let me help you. So it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. We look at them as our children. Wow. Of each <laughs> personalities and names and each have different energy in the way they work with people. So but it could also be that we get that sensing because the intelligence, this living consciousness that's working through them is animating them and recognizes if they could make them like people, it's easier for us to have a relationship with them. Because we're it's just for us to communicate with a, a human, uh, what looks like a human skull. Yeah, because it's it, you know, it's in our shape and it's kind uh -huh. of like us, and it's just easier if it's like you know a person we can talk with them. And there are many other people who email and say, yeah, I'm having conversations with my skull. Wants to be called this name. Could be masculine, could be feminine, could have both. Some of them have um, uh, ET presence or energy connected to it. And there's uh, one we have uh, called the King and Leilani, which is masculine and feminine. It looks like kind of like a gray alien that was made out of China, but does not have that energy to it at all. So it just depends. So oh. it, it's kind of like um, a tool that's returning to help us in our spiritual evolution. So that's, that's what my experience has been with it. And then of course, you know, we, we have a meditation that we do on the 13th at the 13th hour locally. I saw that on Facebook. Yeah, so we do that every month. And I have no idea how many people join us, but the first several hundred do. Then we also help with Crystal Skull World Day which happened in 2014 to 16. And then one of the persons that was on the council is going to uh, continue it this year in a, in a more small way. But it's just the idea that if we work with the crystal skulls, it amplifies the energy that we're focusing on. And if we're all doing a meditation and visualizing for peace, then we're able to send out a much more powerful energy. So and could you tell us your Facebook page or where you, people could get a hold of you and participate? 
Uh, my Facebook page, I don't really have memorized, but I can give out an email and our website is probably. Okay. So our email address is crystalskullexplorers at gmail.com. Okay. Website is CSE, like Crystal Skull Explorer, CSE dot Crystal Skull Explorers dot com. Or, you know, if, if somebody goes on Google and just says Joshua Shapiro and Crystal Skulls, then they'll find us because okay. I, our, the website I had was one of the first on Crystal Skulls. Ever. So but this is our new site that's more enhanced and works with mobile phones better, which you got to have now because everybody's using their phones. And it's Crystal CSE crystalskullexplorers.com cse.crystalskullexplorers.com cse dot crystal skull explorers dot com yeah that looks right I, I can't see it on your screen. You can't see it on the group chat? Uh, the chat came up, let me see. I'm not sure how to work with Zoom. Do you see it up there? Right. Yeah, that's right. CSC. That's right. Okay. okay. So that's okay. where people can find. We have a lot of articles on there, free ebook, free newsletter, and uh, 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 UFO Chronicles, which is an online story. I'm very involved with UFOs. And your email again is Crystal Skull Explorers at gmail.com. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Except you have an extra E in there. It's Crystal Skull Explorers. E oh, that, no E in that. Okay. Yeah, just ERS. I don't know if it'll let me, okay, I better just print it. Are I able to type and they'll see it? Yeah, you can type it. Good. I'm not used to Zoom. I'm used to Skype. That's what I get, Gmail. I have a problem with Skype because they don't have a recorder. No, that's it. Oh, okay. I put an ES. Okay. Exactly. All right. So, right. anyone who's watching this, it's Crystal Skull Explorers at gmail.com. Right. Now, if there are any, anyone listening that's into Crystal Skull, the first novel that I've ever done is going to be coming out, I hope, in November sometime. We're just trying to finalize the cover because for a book, the cover is the most important thing. That's what right. is first. So it's called Journeys into the Unknown and Back Again. And it's about this uh, couple that travels and gives lectures in their crystal skull guardians. And the, the man, Joseph, gets invited to go to Peru through a dimensional door. And the people on the other side are inviting him. So the first book we have coming out is leading up to him walking through that door. Book number two will be what happens to him on the other side. Book number three is when he comes back, Everything that happens to him, the other side has figured out how to have it fully recorded so that when he starts coming through and talking about it, people will be able to experience it in a 3D holographic reality so they experience what he experiences. And then he gets the answers to every, any, every and every question that we would ever want to know. Like, who are we? Where do we come from? What's the purpose? And he gets to meet beings all over in different dimensions, all recorded. So that's wow. but we're working on book number two. That's really difficult because we have to try to describe what is it like on the other side. But what I'm doing is I'm interviewing various mediums and I'm going to be speaking to on Saturday. This, this interview is Thursday of this week. A person had a near death experience uh -huh. has a very conscious memory about what happened to them when they were over there. And we, kind of put this information into the story to make it as um, credible as possible. And I'm even doing what should have been done by somebody else. I love the movie Field of Dreams. Mm -hmm. and then you watch that, you know, Terrence Mann goes out with the players and we all want to know what happened to Terrence Mann. Well, there'll be a chapter in the book where I'm going to explain 
what happened to Terrence Mann. Very cool. Can we watch that interview that you're having? Uh, no, there's no way to do it. I just record the audio and we transcribe it. So. Oh, okay. So is that going to be on your website? No, the interview, well, I'm not sure. The interview is for the book, but what I may do is after the book comes out, I may make all those interviews I have, like the transcription and the audio available if the person I interview gives permission. So, ah, right, okay. But I don't know, it's just me, and that's a lot of work to do first, just to come out with the book and let everybody know about it, and then to make all these other versions of it available. But Spirit told me that after the book comes out, we may be surprised by extra help that may show up. I'm sure <laughs> that's what's been happening to me with the traveling shamans. Yeah, help so, just materializes, right? So that might happen. And then I see this whole series being turned into a movie. So that's what I, I would like to see. I mean, it's like when I'm watching the story, I could feel like I'm in a movie, you know? Mm -hmm. and I see myself being on the set where the actors come up. You know, for Joseph, your main character, how would you do this? And I kind of explain to him, well, I think this is how he would respond or, you know, whatever. Because a lot about Joseph is based upon me. I threw in a lot of my personal experiences into the novel. Of course. <laughs> right. But it still, it all fits together and, you know, it makes sense. And it has to be written in a way so we don't get too far out there so people can follow it. Because the challenge with writing about the other side is they don't know time and space. So the other side has to figure out when they make this video, when it comes back, how are people going to understand it? So it'll come in a chronological order, but it may not necessarily be the order of what happened to the character. But we, we write the story as if it is. You know, he's kind of going through levels. He's in dreamland first, which is where we go when we pass away. And then he's going to go into other dimensions, talk to extraterrestrials. And we don't actually know everything that's going to come up because we're just doing it chapter by chapter. You know, it's like when it's this chapter, okay, we see what we need to do. And I have a friend who's a novelist that's helping. And my work is, is I've come up with the story, but I go back over what she's written and it's like somebody standing behind me and saying, this part's not really correct. You should write this and change this. So I just kind of go with that flow. So I say, I'm <laughs> okay. But so, it's, you know, it's very fast. And if it's not the right time to do it, then I don't feel to do it. But we're in chapter three of the second book. And uh, we already know for four and five kind of what's going to happen. But after that, I have no clue. Somewhere along the way, Joseph will stand in front of creator though. What that's going to look like and how it's going to happen, I don't know yet. So we have to see. And he Where can we get your book? Um, well, again, the, on the website that you gave, okay. there will be a page for it. And I'm also thinking, too, to um, create a free PDF file that will have a piece of it before it comes out. So people can actually see the cover and, you know, they can get it. And then if they sign up, then maybe they'll get a discount when the printed version is done. And then we'll come out with a PDF version and a Kindle version. Okay. All right. The yeah. ebook versions will be out before the end of the year. But again, I don't know because, uh, as you said, I'm a big Bitcoin advisor, and that's keeping me really busy helping people. Oh, I bet. I want to talk to you personally about that more. Right. But for those who are not familiar with Bitcoin, it's a digital-only currency. Okay. So in other words, there's no paper bills. There's no coins. Every transaction happened. But the reason why it works, because I've already done this, is it has a value against all the currencies in the world. So like right now, I was looking today, and one Bitcoin, which started out being only pennies, like 10,000 Bitcoins were used to buy a pizza in 2010, is now worth almost $6,000 per Bitcoin, which I like because I have uh, more than half a Bitcoin that I'm holding right now. So every time it goes up, I do nothing and I'm making extra money. So that's really cool. So it's kind of called like passive income. But the real key, this is what Spirit told me in April. They said, Joshua, you have to get involved in Bitcoin. Well, I normally listen when Spirit's telling me something. But then I said, well, why is that? It's because it is going to become as popular as your mobile and cell phones, your computers, your internet, Everyone is going to start using it. So if you get involved with it now, 
you will be ahead of the game. It's kind of like uh, Microsoft, let's say Microsoft. There was a point where mo nobody heard of Microsoft and then some people knew about it, but it really wasn't big. But then all of a sudden it exploded. Well, we're at that point where Bitcoins is just about to explode. It's gone up 700, over 700% 700 this year in value. And they're saying next year it could be between 10 and 20,000 and it, within 10 years or so, 1 million per Bitcoin. Wow. So the key about this is, is it creates a, a level playing field for everybody it, it, because the banks and uh, the governments are not involved in this. So I started to get involved and miracles have happened. Hang on one second. Right. So as I was saying, you know, I followed what Spirit said and in the beginning, I, I think I had like $50 I converted and maybe I had 100 or 200 in Bitcoin. But then magic doors started opening and I, I had a mentor too who showed me some programs to join. So it's not just you have it, it's also there's opportunities you can participate, which accelerate the amount of Bitcoins you have. And I'm at a point right now where probably 30 to $50 a day in Bitcoins I'm receiving from a program that I'm in and it wow. just keeps growing. So when you have this beautiful, wonderful thing that's given to you, I feel it's your responsibility to turn around and share that with other people. Because inside of me, I know for a fact, this is, this is here. Nobody's going to be able to stop it. It's going to keep growing. More companies are going to start using it. Like for example, there is a big rumor on the internet that Amazon is getting ready to accept Bitcoins to uh, accept products for their products and services. That's huge. They have That's two huge, yes. <laughs> people. So that validates this is a real thing. Japan and Australia already accept it as a legal currency. People who have IRAs can be paid in Bitcoins, I heard. And also I read the government is trying to figure out how do we get our piece of this? And the company that I'm in that's helping me to expand my Bitcoins, they met with whoever's in the government that okays businesses, and they were approved, and they're totally geared toward Bitcoins. So wow. everybody listening to this broadcast, now I'm going to be in Aries, and you may think I have a big ego by what I say, but this is probably the most important thing I'm sharing today. And also Richard Branson said something like this too, which I put on my Facebook page. And this is basically, if you don't get involved with Bitcoins as soon as possible, you're going to totally miss it. You're going to kick yourself. You're going to say, why didn't I listen to, to the people I'm, I'm hearing about? So when I say this, I'm not saying this because there is going to be a benefit necessarily for me. I'm saying it because from my experience, it's exploded. I've never been involved in let's say an online opportunity, if you will. I mean, we try to sell our products and everything, and we've struggled for many, many years. And I keep asking the universe, please send me something so I can have a continuous flow so that, you know, we don't have to worry from month to month, how are we going to do it? We can focus on what we're here to do, our work. And this was the answer that came. So I think that if other people would just get started with it, I mean, you don't have to buy a lot of Bitcoin, $5, $10 start or Maybe the program I'm in to be a part of it, and then it starts to build. Um, I, I just believe that um, those who get involved now, in two years, they will be in a much better position because wow. they decided to do this. And I can't stop my success now if I wanted to. <laughs> like you don't want to. I've invited a lot of people, but I have more people who who don't answer me or say no, and I just. I just feel sad for them, but what can I do? You know, even if I show them my results, I can show you what I did for this. They still, they won't believe you. And that's unfortunate that we have this fear and doubt mentality. Yeah. That and is. matter of fact, one Bitcoin is worth more than an ounce of gold. And it's a better investment than anything else that's out there right now. It's also, there are other digital currencies, over a thousand now. It's unbelievable. The other sign is I've heard the United States government is looking to create their own digital coin called FedCoin. I've China, heard that one. China also is looking to do this. Banks are looking. Why are they considering this 
if this was not something powerful? Why would Richard Branson, a very, very successful entrepreneur, a maverick, who's always doing these, you know, eccentric things, but they work. Why would he say, you're going to miss it if you don't get in? What yeah. is he know? Well, I know what he knows now because I've experienced it. And it's like when I wake up in the morning, I'm excited every day because I get these ideas about what can I do today and what kinds of strategies and things. And then who am I going to help? You know, which person will come back to me in a year and say, you know, Joshua, because you help me to get into Bitcoin. I'm so grateful to you. I didn't see the vision you saw, but I trusted you. And this is what I think is going to happen. So anybody listening to this, please contact me. I have a free class on Bitcoins, and I'm also doing a blog site, which I'm far behind. I need to catch up. Talking about what happened to me. Because most of the time, people just say, you could join this program. Here's what it is. No, I want to know what happened to a person who was successful. So since I'm a writer, I'm writing my experiences and ideas. And so I have a blog site for that, too. So I'm just, and where's that, your blog? Um, the blog site, I'll type it in. It's um, Bitcoins and Me. Yeah, WordPress.com. Let's see if I did it right. So bitcoinsatme.wordpress.com. Okay. So, you know, I have like about seven or eight posts, and it's catching me up to about July, because July is when we had our first major explosion. We had an $800 day. Wow. $800 we received in one day. In, bit, in bitcoins. Yep, all in bitcoins. And it's yeah. a program that I was in and a friend who joined me. So... I think well yes. I want to thank you for being on the show today. Sure. We're, we're out of time now, but um I want to talk to you further after this is over. So right. thank you very much and I hope you will uh, we have your website address and we'll anybody who needs to contact Joshua about this. Right. And I answer my emails very fast. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Julia.